Hello, Monetization Nation. Jay Samet is a best-selling author, entrepreneur, and an expert on disruption and innovation. He's raised hundreds of millions of dollars for startups and advised Fortune 500 firms. Jay has created strategic partnerships with McDonald's, Coca-Cola, United Airlines, Microsoft, Ford, GM, Best Buy, and many others. In today's episode, Jay and I will discuss how to get free marketing. We'll also discuss the first three truths of his book, Future Proofing You, 12 truths for creating opportunity, maximizing wealth, and controlling your destiny in an uncertain world. Can you start off by sharing with us something that you are super passionate about? That's an easy one. I love living in a free society. I love living in a democracy. You can't have a democracy without a strong middle class. And entrepreneurs are who create the middle class. We're the job creators. And this pandemic wiped out the middle class, not just in the US, but, but globally. When I looked at what happened in our nation's capital in January, what I saw were thousands of people to feel left out, left behind, fighting over leftovers. And yet everybody has the ability to succeed. And I wrote, you know, future-proofing you to show that an immigrant on welfare can become a self-made millionaire in a year. So can you. So that's a specific story. Um, would you tell us that story? So I wrote my first book, Disrupt You, as a way to pay it forward. It, it, it really not just uh, changed my life, it just changed my outlook. Because when you're a CEO, your inbox is all the problems of the company and, and every day is just a grind. When you write a book that changes people's lives, you hear from them. I've heard from people in 140 countries. They don't say that to brag. I say that to go, it's amazing how connected we are. Yeah. And I could see the impact it was having on just changing countries and, 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 and people. But occasionally, I'd get an email that said, this is all motivational. This is all good information, but I could never do it. And it was usually from a younger person, a millennial. And it bugged me. Why was I not able to reach this, this generation? What was I failing at? So I decided to put my reputation on the line with Future Proofing You. And I said, what if I take somebody with no support system, an immigrant, somebody new to the country, somebody that grew up on welfare, somebody that's basically couch surfing from home to home and basically a step above homeless. Could I teach them these things in a year? The ground rules where I gave is the young man's name was Vin Clancy. I gave him no capital. I didn't open my contacts. I didn't give him any, any contacts. And I didn't tell him what business to start, but it had to be something that took no money. And spoiler alert for the ending of the book, uh, he made it mil his first million dollars in 11 months. And so I took the mentoring sessions, uh, synthesized them down to 12 truths. And if you follow these 12 truths, you will be successful. What's, what's the biggest mistake you've made in your career and what'd you learn from it? Oh my God. I've made more mistakes than most people because I go <laughs> out and try more. I mean, what you're going to learn is mistakes are part of the process. You'll fail forward. When I was uh, 21 or in my early twenties and I knew absolutely everything as you tend to think you do yes. at that age, um, I had at that point was making video games. I had seven of the 10 best-selling video games in the U S and oh my a, goodness. Com a company came, it's the early days of video games, didn't take much. Uh, <laughs> and a company that was bigger than ours came along and said, we'll acquire you for 30%. And I turned them down because I'm like, well, they could mess up my company. I don't understand stock. I, I really didn't understand the business world at that point. That company you would know as Activision, and that was a $9 billion mistake. Um, so that's the biggest. I've made many, many mistakes, but... I have a perfect life now. So the mistakes propel you forward. You, when you make a mistake, you don't end up where you started. You either earn or you learn. And each time you earn more. And that's what people have to understand. Failing is part of the process. When you play a video game, you don't sit down and four hours later go, ooh, I made it to the end. You hit an obstacle and you hammer and hammer and you finally get over that obstacle. And lo and behold, there's another one. That's what running yeah. a business is about. And what a great analogy. And all that I'm trying to do is show people that there's no shame in this. There, there's a difference between failing and failure. Failing is learning what doesn't work. Failure is throwing in the towel and walking away. 
And every great company was made by a series of failures. Um, you, you rattled off in the intro some of the partners I've worked with. One of my favorite stories is two guys decades ago had this genius idea. What if we hook up computers to street lights to control traffic and cities will flow better? Turns out no city planner had any idea what Bill Gates and Paul Allen were talking about. So their first company, Trafo Data, went belly up. Their second company, Microsoft, made him the richest man in the world. Henry Ford's first company went belly up. Walt Disney's, you go on and on and on. So it is part of the process. And once you realize it, once you realize investors will rather invest in somebody that's failed before than somebody that's never failed, you're halfway there. If you have problems in your life, all that an entrepreneur does is solve problems. Solve for a few people, you're popular. Solve for a million, you're rich. Solve for a billion, you change history. Yeah, that is so profound. Um, what is your best monetization secret or strategy? Um, so I have an expression, it's probably not my expression, but it's called OPM, other people's money. I'm about to tell you how you can get companies that will give you millions of dollars. They don't want it paid back. They don't want any equity. Now I've got your attention. Your ears should yeah. be perked up. It works like this. Whatever product you're selling, you're going after a target audience. You're not the only one going after that audience. Let's pretend you're selling shoes for old people, okay? Uh, special you know, walking shoes or canes. Um, there's other companies who want to reach that audience, maybe a drug manufacturer, maybe whatever. They have huge marketing budgets, but because of the structure of corporations nowadays, they don't have any new ideas. So if you can get your idea to help them reach that audience, they'll spend millions of their dollars to make your business. And so I'll give you an example. Um, Sony was in trouble. Uh, Apple was, was kicking their butt with the iPod and iTunes, and they were late to the game. So I was brought in to turn around Sony and launch their com competition to iTunes. iTunes was already out there and spent a hundred million dollars a year marketing. My marketing budget was zero dollars and zero cents. So what did I do? I said, okay, who's in the news that's in trouble? And that year there was a movie called Super Size Me from Spurlock about eating McDonald's and you, you eat too much of it, you die. So McDonald's sales were down 9%, first time in their history. So I said, okay. Now all that I have to do is have, find the connection between my music store that I want to launch and McDonald's. Real easy. Buy a Big Mac, get a free track, we'll put a code on the box, everybody gets, gets it. McDonald's did 60 million in TV commercials, put it in every bag, every tray liner, every window of every store, and drove me 20 million paying customers my first week. Wow. It cost, cost me zero dollars and zero cents. At the same time, the other big company that was in trouble was United Airlines was struggling to come out of bankruptcy. They wanted some attention. Okay, how do I connect the dots to my music store and United Airlines? Well, United Airlines, there were tons of people that had frequent flyer miles that they thought they wouldn't be able to use. So why not make, you could use your frequent flyer miles to buy music. And why not announce this by doing the first concert in the sky? We had Sheryl Crow perform on a flight from Chicago to LA, filled the plane with journalists and TV broadcasters, shot it with a nine camera shoot, edited it in first class. So everybody walked off with a DVD and that concert played on every flight for a month. Neither of those things cost me a penny. And I've done this hundreds of times with the smallest businesses to the biggest. So that, that's probably, you know, in, in my top five uh, go-to tricks. Yeah, I love it. What a great strategy. What is the biggest tectonic shift that you feel is transforming the business landscape today? Ah, so that's one of my 12 truths is I talk about a trillion dollar opportunity that no one has a head start on you right now. So before I tell you, and I'm not teasing you, I want to prove it so you can understand where I'm coming from. Could you live without your smartphone? Absolutely. Would I you want could? to? Now, I could, could live without it, your, but... Could you run your business today? Seriously. It would be, it would be hard. I could live okay. without it. Could okay. I, would I want to? No. Could, could you, could you be a successful business person with that one? No. No, it would be very The average hard. American spends five hours a day on their smartphone. It's part of their life. Yeah. Yep. 10 years ago, when the phone came out, let me tell you two of the top 10 apps, a fart app. Yeah. You heard me right. And a game with cats. 
which is another way of saying nobody saw all the billion dollar businesses that would come out of the app world. Yep. You know, Robinhood, OpenTable, go on and on and on. So starting in the next couple of years, this end of this year and mostly in 2022, 2023, you're not going to be taking your phone out of your pocket anymore. We're all going to have glasses that are heads up displays. And information is now going to come to you and tie to the environment. So spatial reality becomes the new thing. Well, if this is where you're searching and Google isn't there, they go out of business. If this is the device now and you're not buying it from Apple, they go out of business. And I could go the same with LinkedIn and Facebook. Et so the big guys are spending billions to make sure there's enough 5G, enough edge computing, all that infrastructure is done. What they're not doing is making those little apps that change your life. So it could be as simple as you don't remember where you parked your car and you just see a line on the sidewalk. It could be you are in a foreign country and any menu you read will be in the language that you understand, where they also do audio. Anybody can speak to you in any of 40 languages and you'll understand it. Um, it can also subtract from the environment. Your doctor tells you you have diabetes, you go in a supermarket, there's 40,000 products. Show me the ones with no sugar and everything else disappears. Or show me the things for keto diet or halal, or I just wanna see wines from, from France. So there's gonna be hundreds of new apps spawning tons of new billionaires. Why wouldn't you wanna jump on that? Because here's the secret that I discovered early on. Be the best at what you do or the only one doing it. Because if you're the only one doing it by definition, you're the best. You're the best. Yeah. So I always look to, and in Future Proofing You, I explain this, find a void. Find something that you can differentiate yourself. And this is what I did with this young man. I, when I got out of college, I realized the first time I thought about getting a job, whatever job was listed, somebody else has already had. Tons of people have more experience. The world's filled with all this. How am I going to compete? And I hate competition. On any day, there's somebody smarter than me, yeah. richer, better connected, just better looking. I hate that guy. <laughs> so why not go over here? And then all you have to do is then to fight to hold on to that turf that you create for as long as possible. And so this, this has served me well. And, and I'm not an engineer. You don't have to be an engineer. You only need two things for success, insight and perseverance. Everything else can be higher. Everybody listening to my voice right now has written the same amount of code as Steve Jobs, who created the first trillion dollar company, which, which was a software zilch, company, yeah. which was you're right. Nothing. You can hire that. My, my first company, I started with a dollar. I saw this movie. You may have heard of it called Star Wars. And I was, oh my God, this is amazing. I want to do Hollywood special effects. Um, I knew nobody in Hollywood. I knew nothing about special effects, but it seemed like a good thing to do. So back then you could hire George Lucas ILM, super expensive, big budget movies. But my gut told me there were lots of people that wanted special effects, but couldn't afford that. So for $1, I printed business cards and I made up a production company, Jasmine Productions, J. Allen Samet, and it's mine. That's where the name came from. But I knew nobody's gonna trust their feature film on a 21 year old. So I didn't make myself head of the company. I just gave myself a sales title. And then I went out and hustled and I got projects that I had no idea how to do because <laughs> I don't have to do it. I can hire those people. And that's all that you're going to do in your entire career. So don't get hung up on, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. If you had a sales meeting in New York, you sure don't know how to make a plane or probably how that heavy plane takes off but you can utilize it to get to where you're going. And that's all that I'm trying to teach people to do in Future Proofing You. I love it. Let's, let's dive right into that then. Okay. Let's dive into the 12 truths in, um, in Future Proofing You. So number one, you must have a growth mindset. How do we develop that growth mindset? So what happens through your life is your teachers, your parents, your well-wishers want to shield you from pain. Oh, pain is so dangerous. So they steer you away from trying things where you'll fail. They put that voice in your head, you're not good enough, you can't do it. That's a horrible thing. So disrupt you was to teach people, you know, everybody thinks of changing the world, but nobody thinks of changing themselves to change that voice. Within, 
if I was trying to get somebody that grew up from a, an absolute fixed mindset that he can not achieve type of environment to being a millionaire in one year, I didn't have time for the organic growth. So in our very first meeting, I lied to Viv. And he didn't find this out till we read the book, which was kind of funny, um, at least from my standpoint. He, he texted me, ha ha. Um, there's a psychological principle called the Pygmalion effect. A professor went to school, tested all the kids, told the teachers, these three students would be super learners, super achievers. They, they excel this year. At the end of the year, when they tested all the kids, those three kids were the stars. But the professor lied. He just picked three names out of a hat. If you tell people they're special and you treat them special, they will be special. So I told Vin that I interviewed over a hundred different candidates. In fact, he was the only one I interviewed. And he was, the, and I told him he was the only one that had all the attributes to be a self-made millionaire. Oh my goodness. And so he believed it. That put him into that mindset. If this old dude that's successful sees it, then I guess I'll go along. And it's interesting, unbeknownst to me, when I left him after that first meeting, uh, I bought him pizza twice. That's the only help I gave him. At our first meeting, we had pizza. He stayed at the pizza power and wrote a note to himself. And that note is in the book, Future Proofing You, where in my words, not his, he basically said, I don't believe this, but I got nothing else going on. So I'm going to go for it. And that's okay. all it took. If you think you can, or you think you can't, you're right. That's the basis of the growth mindset. It's nothing more complex, but, and I start each morning with two things that I say in the mirror. Today can be better than yesterday. And I have the power to make it so. And as silly as that may sound, here's what it does. It releases endorphins. It lights up my synaptic nerves. It suddenly puts me in a mindset to be able to go out and see whatever problem I face as just an opportunity in disguise. That's the basis of all success. And I teach you exercises to, to, to make this happen, but that's, that's really the key. And, and what was Vin's business? You want to, so, so that's, so, that's in number two, I guess we'll get to that. Is well, that... no, his business really doesn't, doesn't make a difference, but in his case, he grew up with social media as the normal thing. And he wanted to do social media for other people, like probably 40 million people on the planet. Okay. And if you're a kid on somebody's sofa somewhere, you're not suddenly going to get a call from, you know, general motors, please do our social media you're going to meet other broke people that'll pay you $200 a week or hundred dollars a week to do it. So I explained to Vin what we were just talking about, fill a void, be the best at what you do. I said, look at the news, look in the newsfeed, look what people are talking about. What's something new? What's something that's on the zeitgeist of society and market yourself as the social media expert for that. So that year was the year that Bitcoin went from a thousand to 20,000. Everybody's talking about Bitcoin. And at the same time, everybody late to the game was creating other alternative currencies, Ripple, Ethereum, whatever. And they were launching these with what we'll call ICOs, initial coin offerings. So if Vin made himself the expert for that, these people really needed help very quickly. So your first client in any business, even if you just get them for free, you come out of that first client with what the MBAs call a case study. Yep, credibility. So he killed it for the first client. Now he could show that to everybody else. So the people that were paying him $200 a month to do social media, by month three, were paying him 30,000 a month. And he was turning away business. It really is that simple. It doesn't mean you're not working your ass off. It doesn't mean that been for a year, worked harder than most people were willing to, so he can live the rest of his life in a manner that most people can't. It seems like a fair trade. Yeah. Don't spend five hours on your phone. Don't watch TV. Don't go to the game. Don't date. You know, daytime is for prospecting. Nighttime was for doing the work. I tell the story in the book of somebody else that I work with, another immigrant that came to this country. He really wanted to be an entrepreneur. And he said, if I could live for a dollar a day, I know I can always make a dollar a day. So with a bunch of top ramen and bags of oranges, Elon Musk lived for a dollar a day for a month. Oh my goodness. And then he and his brother rented a little office. They had one computer to save money. They had no apartment. They slept on the floor at night. They used the YMCA to shower and they launched the first business that morphed into what became known as PayPal. They used that computer for the day. The site was up at night. They coded on it, but he tested his metal to say, I'm no longer afraid, which gets us to fear. 
one of the yes. 12 truths. Um, this is where I differ from all the charlatans that just annoy me with their fear isn't real stuff. Fear is real. We are biologically hardwired with fear. Fear is why you're here. When your great great grandfather was in that cave and that saber tooth tiger came in, he ran. And that's why you're here to tell the story. Okay. So the central part of our brain, the fight or flight response, you cannot avoid it. Athletes tap into that, they exercise to get in perfect body shape, but is that fear that releases adrenaline that allows them to become Olympiads. So here's what you have as fear if you're starting your business. Fear of failing, fear of embarrassment, fear of losing your money, fear of losing other people's money, your family's money, all legitimate fears. But if you're walking across some railroad tracks and a train is coming at you at 120 miles an hour, are you thinking about those fears or are you thinking about losing your life and jumping out of the way? So you can prioritize fears. So put this fear at the front of your mind. If you're at a job where you're not learning, you're not growing, they're paying you enough to show up and not enough to care, and you're trading a day of your life, a week of your life, a year of your life, 20 years, your whole life, you've given up your life the one time you have on the planet, the most precious thing you will ever have. For what? Because you're afraid of being embarrassed? Because you're afraid to try? And every day that you put off trying is a day less that you have to make mistakes and build your future. So that's the fear. So you can prioritize fear. Now comes the fun part. If you accept this definition of fear, then turn the table. Everybody you're ever going to try to sell to, recruit, get investment from, has the same fears. And I teach you how to use those fears to your advantage. Not as a mafia tactic, you know, buy this or I break your knees, but to make them worried about losing their jobs, their position, you know, whatever it may be, if they miss this. And that's a, a key tool. Thank you so much, Jay, for sharing your stories and insights with us today. Here's some of my key takeaways from this episode. Number one, we can use creative marketing partnerships with companies that have reach to grow our marketing exposure like Jay did with McDonald's. Number two, we often fail before we have success. We should use our failures as lessons to learn. Number three, success requires insight and perseverance. Number four, wherever there are obstacles, there are also opportunities. We must learn to identify and seize these opportunities. Number five, fear is good. We can prioritize fear and leverage it to motivate us to do the things we want, like start a business. To learn more about or connect with Jay, you can connect with him on LinkedIn or visit his website at jsamet.com. And there's links to both of those sites in the blog post for this episode at monetizationnation.com. You can also get a free ebook about passion marketing and learn how to identify and leverage the highest passions of our ideal customers at passionmarketing.com. You can also subscribe to Monetization Nation on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, our Facebook group, and on your favorite podcast platform. Thanks for joining me for this episode. I wish you success in your entrepreneurial journey. Do you want to become a better digital monetizer? To receive great monetization stories and secrets, please go to monetizationnation.com and join free. And if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the show and share it.